Hey guys, Toxic here and welcome to the third video of ToxyUI features. In this video, I'll be talking about Wonderbar, what it is, what it does and how can we customize it. I'm not gonna go through every single option because the video would get long otherwise, but uh, yeah, I'll grab your favorite cup of tea and let's go. So let's open the uh, Wonderbar options by clicking the Toxy settings page, select the Wonderbar. And in one sentence, I guess, what is Wonderbar? It's the data bar at the bottom of the screen. And uh, it displays uh, various information and uh, shortcuts to access various parts of your UI. So in the general tab, we have the same description. Then we have some general visibility options, uh, display options, I guess. Then we, of course, have font settings, colors, animations, uh, the background. Uh, the background fade is quite an interesting thing. So if I disable it, you can see we see the full texture. But if I enable it, only you know the top is faded out and you can control the strength of that fade. So pretty cool. Uh, I get a lot of questions on how to change the background. So this is all the settings you need. So you can you know, do whatever you want. And then lastly, we have the flyout backdrop. You can control the flyouts that appear in Wunderbar, specifically for the Hearthstone module and the Professions module. But uh, we will get to those uh, in, a, in a minute. The next tab is module positions and this is basically configuration on where what appears so let me enable a debug mode for Wunderbar and here you can see at the bottom of the screen it is split into nine equal parts we have the three left modules then we have the three middle modules and we have the three right modules and you can see that each module has the same width to it. So keep this in mind that if we have a module that has a big width, for example, we have two professions like uh, jewel crafting and engineering, both long names, both have icons. So if there is not enough space in this orange uh, block, then you know one profession would get cut off. So keep that in mind that the width of the modules is, uh, you know, dynamic. And sometimes if there is no space, uh, a module simply won't show. And of course, I have the same information written here in the description. For modules themselves, we have a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but uh, several Docs UI modules. And of course, we also support LVUI data texts, which you can see right here. And we also support lib data brokers. So if an add-on you're using uh, supports LDB, you can select it here. So for example, instead of spec switch, I can select uh, details. And now if I hover here, you can see I have details options, left click to open, right click for quick menu, uh, etc. So keep that in mind. And one last caveat is that the middle uh, module is always time you cannot change this you cannot put time in a different position and that is because time has a unique dynamic width setting that i will show you very soon And lastly, we go to the module settings tab and the first module we have is currencies. So the currencies module is fairly self-explanatory. It displays your currencies. Uh, you can select which currency you want to display it. So if I select a different uh, currency, for example, Cosmic Flux, it's gonna show Cosmic Flux 3.7K. Then you can have some uh, customization for the gold. So. You can select to show silver copper, use colors for the letters and show free backspace. And then the list of various currencies here is basically what you want to show in the tooltip of the currencies. 
So you can see here I have all the various quests enabled. So if I hover the tooltip, you can see Dragon Flight, and I see all those quests plus Flight Stones. And that matches what I have selected. So if I want to see a Time Ward badge, I just enable it. There we go, Dungeon and Raid, Time Ward badge. And lastly, another new feature that uh, recently got introduced is the display of Warbank Gold, because previously we did not have that. And now you can see your gold in all your characters, in your Warbank, and then of course the total value of both of those places. So yeah. Next up we have the data bar and basically data bar is a reputation slash experience bar. So by default it's set to the smart mode, which means it will show you experience under max level. And uh, if you're max level and you have a reputation tracked, it will show you the reputation. So for example, if I track this shows experience bar, you can see the data bar appeared right here at the bottom. It shows me the progress, the percentage, and of course the tooltip. And then lastly, you have uh, basic settings for its like uh, icon control, bar size, info text. Very simple. Next up, we have the durability module, and I actually have to enable this. So. We go back to module positions instead of the data bar i can just set durability and here we can see it shows up let me just quickly disable uh, debug mode and we're back uh, so yeah durability a uh, fairly simple uh, module it shows your durability so right now my gear is a little bit broken it shows that i'm 62 percent and it has of course a color threshold so if it were i uh a low value like 20 percent it would turn red and we can test this really easily if i repair my gear it goes up to 100 and of course there's a tooltip that shows all the item level you can access your armory through here and you can right click to summon the grand expedition yak so that's pretty pretty cool The Hearthstone module is probably one of my favorites and the one I use the most. So essentially this is your all teleports in one place, uh, I don't know, module. <laughs> On a basic level what it does, you have two buttons where you can set a Hearthstone, so primary and secondary. So for example, a primary I can set my regular Hearthstone, I don't know, Headless Horseman. And then for secondary I can set Dalaran Hearthstone. And that would be it and uh, we can see that both cooldowns are showing and both of them are ready and by clicking them I you know start casting the hearthstone fairly simple and then the other cool features we have are we support mythic plus portals and we also support uh, class portals so since I am on mage if I shift right click I can op open the mage teleport menu where I have all my teleports and all my portals here. And if I'm a very cool, serious Mythic Plus enjoyer and I have access to Mythic Plus portals, I can shift left click to open the M Plus portals. And the M Plus portals have a, a little bit of customization. So here you can see there's a seasonal M Plus teleports toggle. So if I disable this, it's gonna show every single uh, portal that I have. If I enable it, it's gonna show only the current season. And then we also have a new feature that was added, like, I don't know, an hour before recording this video, is show labels. So if I disable that, you can see the portals are simple icons, but if I enable show label labels, uh, we see an abbreviation of the dungeon name. So. It's easy, easier to use, I guess. And one more thing I forgot to show during my initial uh, recording is the flyout backdrop customization. So if I open the mage portals, you can see this black flyout be behind it and you can customize it. So for example, I can reduce the alpha of the backdrop itself. You can see it's transparent. I can reduce the border width. 
uh, so it's, you know, thin. And then I can also, also enable class color. So let me bump the alpha back up again. You can see now it's class colored. And you can, of course, uh, disable all the customization. So it's just the portals. The next module is the micro menu and you can see it at the bottom left of your screen. It is basically the game menu uh, replacement. So if you don't know your shortcuts, you don't know how to open certain menus, you can control what you want to see here. But uh, if, you, if you need to use more, you know, you can always enable, disable them. And uh, again, keep in mind that you can see that I'm right now toggling, for example, uh, shop, right? I'm toggling the shop icon, but it's not showing up. And that is because we don't have enough space for it to show. But if I disable the module next to the menu, in this case, the uh, profession module, you can see that the icons, you know, increase. So I can show all of them if I want to. So we, we see all the item icons. And then if we go to, uh, you know, module positions and again, select a second module for professions, the micro menu shrinks. And keep in mind that the Tox UI icon cannot be disabled and it's always going to show last. And the same for game menu, can't be disabled and it's always first. Then we have the profession module. Uh, it basically displays your professions and you know, by left clicking you can open them. It's enchanting tailoring. And if you want, you can right click and also access all your secondary professions, cooking in this example. Uh, now keep in mind that profession one is always gonna show your primary profession and your secondary profession. So if we look at the professions uh, frame, tailoring is our first profession. So you cannot, you know, you can't have enchanting your secondary profession in the first slot. What you can do though, is hide the first slot and make enchanting show and that's gonna move it to the left instead of the first slot. Now if I bring back the first slot, it's gonna show, it's gonna, you know, enchanting is gonna move to the second position again. So keep that in mind and of course you can, you have other basic uh, customization. Now the spec switch module is probably the one I use the most. It's very convenient, I can do basically everything here. So I can obviously change my specs. So for example, if I wanna go to, from fire, frost to fire, I simply left click it and select fire. There we go. Then I can change the loot specialization. So currently it's fire, I, I wanna do arcane, whatever. And it's displaying your spec, uh, your loot spec. If it's not, you know, the primary one, the default, then you can of course toggle the talent screen if you want with uh, shift left click. And probably the coolest thing, we can change the loadouts. And the loadouts name shows up in the spec switch module. So I, I switch to raid pre-patch and I also have flame strike pre-patch and both of them, you know, show up in the spec switch. So that's a, that's a pretty cool feature. And then of course you have some basic customization. So I can disable showing loadout name. I can, you know, it's, it's very basic. Just go through them, play around with them. Very easy to understand. Then we have the system module. It's this little module here that displays our uh, FPS and our latency. And uh, there's not much to, you know, uh, talk about here. The only thing worth mentioning is that the frame rate threshold is uh, something that if you have frames below this threshold, it's gonna change color. So if I bump this up to 200, you can see my frame, uh, you know, frame icon turned yellow. If I bump this up to 300, it's gonna turn red. And the same goes for latency. So if I set it to 10, you now 30 is way above 10, that's why it shows red. If I set it to 25, it's gonna be yellow. So play around with these settings, set them to what your machine usually runs on. And uh, this should uh, help you easier spot, you know, some differences in your latency or your frame rate.
Next up, we have the time uh, module. The basics of the time module is basically showing time, but it also has a couple of cool features like it's going to pulse on a calendar invite, which you have not accepted yet. Then we also have the option to display AM PM, uh, show mail if you have some unopened mail, and then the dynamic width, which I talked about before. So if I toggle this, we see that the spec switch and the volume modules, they shrink closer to the time module. And then of course we have the basics like uh, font stuff, and uh, format stuff so if you're not from europe i guess you want to change un change this from 24 to 12 hours and, and so on then we have the volume module which is again also very simple it basically dis displays your current uh, volume and you can change you know quickly access which volume you want to set, you can open the settings, you can toggle them, you can just mute with one click, you can also select which one you want to do so. For example, I want music, I select music, I you know, use my scroll wheel, and then I have music. And I can quickly, you know, enable, disable it again. And then lastly, we have this last settings uh, panel for LVI and uh, LDB data text. So for example, if I enable an LVI data text, for example, mastery, and you can see I can toggle between uppercase, lowercase, and I can also allow text color. And that is it for the ToxyY Wunderbar. It's uh, highly customizable, has uh, lots of stuff. So play around with it, see what fits you best. Uh, and before anyone asks, no, you cannot move it to the top and we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna allow that, sorry. This video is now 21 minutes long, so hopefully I can reduce it by at least half uh, while, when I'm editing. So yeah, bye-bye. Um, See you in the next one.